Hi everyone. Everything spice here. Well, it's snowing again in New England. Yes, this is my camper. Say hi camper. <laughs> yes, it's snowing again. So, I want to make something, I don't know, tummy warming. Come in the kitchen and I'll show you what I mean. All right, welcome back. Today, well, it's cold outside. Look at this, a baby, it's cold outside. So today what I want to do is something a little more substantial, something more of winter. So I am making something that's truly a family favorite in this house. American chop suey. That's right, I'm making American chop suey. Now I already have my elbow macaroni cooked and draining, and we're gonna set up all the ingredients to set up American chop suey on everything spice. So gather together by the fire. You can hear it in the background. Now that's not outside. That's an actual, what, YouTube video that I like to watch. So the howling winds, it's just for ambiance, people. So join me on the other side for everything spice, American chop suey. Yeah. All right, American chop suey is basically spaghetti or elbow macaroni with a meat sauce. You don't necessarily have to put meat in it, but it is something that my family has always had like goulash, which is basically a chunky spaghetti sauce and served over pasta. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do is chop up some onion the way I always do it, dicing. But as I've mentioned before, and if you're new, please like and subscribe. Welcome to the channel. As I've mentioned before, it's a method. Cooking is definitely a method. So there is room for interpretation. Sizzle, sizzle. Gotta have that sizzle, baby. That means the pan is ready to cook. Ready to do whatever. Saute, fry, whatever for you. You gotta have that sound of sizzling for sauteing that I just dub so much. So anyway, so food for me is a memory. I never had this. My mother made um, spaghetti sauce. She would make chunky spaghetti sauce. So this is kind of similar in the sense of what my mom would make. So I guess you could say, yeah, the best of both worlds. The memory of something I had growing up, something he had growing up, combined into one. But everybody in this area knows it, and I'm sure other places too, know it as American chop suey. You can use whatever vegetables, the vegetables that I'm using today are peppers and onions. Possibly I'll add garlic to it later as well. But I like the peppers and onions. Although conversationally, Italians will put carrots in their sauce versus sugar to sweeten the pot. Yeah, they do. So this is a one pot wonder in the sense of you don't have to cut it too fine. You just chop and drop. And I know I have my, my handy dandy scooper here, but for whatever reason, I always use my knife. I don't know, it's just habit. I don't always go looking for these other utensils that I have, all these do that, these like fancy things. I don't always use it. But this is a cool one, Rachel Ray. She's awesome. And she does have a lot of nice pots and pans. This is one of them. I get a lot of her stuff. Yes, and I'm not getting paid by Rachel. Right, Rachel, we know you're not paying me a dime <laughs> to say anything about your stuff. But anyway, we're gonna mix this in. And it's really like nice and chunky. And then what I'm gonna do once it's semi sauteed, 
is I'm gonna take it out and start sauteing my hamburger. So basically what this is, onions, peppers, I'm gonna add some garlic to this. And then I got a small package at the store today. I just went to the store today to get a smaller package of hamburger and I'm using 80-20. I like the fattier type. It's cheaper, first of all, but you drain the fat anyways, at least I do. Conversationally, mom never did. You know mommy never did. She never did, but I do. So I'm gonna get it to this point where it's translucent, a minute or two more, take it out. Then I'm gonna saute my hamburger, drain the fat, take it out. I'll join you on the other side so I can show you the sauce portion of it. This is gonna be quick, quick. And when, you know, week, this is a weekend, obviously it's Saturday, but if it was during the week, quick, quick. I mean, I work till five o'clock now, my friends. I have a very nice professional job. Two, one of them's part-time, one of them's full, but I get home after five, like 5.30 now. I have to get quick, quick, man. I don't got no time for that. So, you know, I gotta get these quick meals. So I'm giving you ideas too. You could make this in advance so that during the week, you don't have to just reheat and eat. Now that's a tip worth keeping. Keep that in your pocket. It's gonna come in handy. So join me on the other side when we make the sauce portion of it, mix it all together. It's gonna be great. You're gonna love it. So I drained all of the fat from the hamburger. So see, this is what it looks like. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to add, and I added garlic to the hamburger and then drained it, but the garlic, I just smashed it, put it in. So it'll break up in the process. Here's what we got for our goulash. Let me get this out of the way. So you can see. I have a can of pasta sauce. Any can will do. I'm just doing this one. And that is that. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I'm using it. Now, for this, I have, I believe it was two cans of diced tomatoes and one can of whole tomatoes. And what I did with the whole tomatoes is I got my gloves out and I squished, squished, squished to have like a, you know, a consistency, chunkiness. Put it all in into the pot slowly so you don't wear it and then because this is basically like a spaghetti sauce we're making homemade semi-homemade however you want to call it hamburger sauce my mother used to make this all the time growing up now the cans of diced tom tomatoes i added water we gotta thin out and make it like spaghetti sauce consistency. And then I had some residual liquid from the pasta. Don't get rid of it. You know why? Because the starches thicken a sauce. So it really is imp importante to at least get a little bit of the cooking liquid from your pasta. Bef you know, I, I semi cook it. I par cook the pasta because it's going to go into the oven. So don't cook it all the way because then it's going to be too mushy. I like al dente uh, to the tooth or to the bite. So it has a little bit of give. I don't like mushy pasta. I never did. All right. So add some of that pasta liquid. Don't get rid of it. Come on now. Sugar, fourth of a cup. I use it. I'm not Italian. I'm not putting a carrot in here, but you could put a carrot in there. But I want to put sugar. My mother used to dump so much sugar into her pasta sauce i'm telling you it would raise your diabetes i'm telling you that's how bad it was all right some pepper now i got this cool pepper bell i'm gonna use it today let's see i'm gonna use it for the first time should i be doing this on the show i don't know the whole thing's probably gonna be a disaster but i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it oh, i love it this is so awesome man all right crank it up now that is soups cool. All right, baby. All right, some cheesy, cheesy pleasy. I might support, I might also put some parsley. I got some cilantro leaves. Yeah. So I haven't stemmed them yet, but basically you just take the stem 
and you pull the leaves out. I don't use the stems because they're just too hard, you know what I mean? So I just play around with it. And then I wash them good though. I wash the cilantro leaves, dry them with a paper towel, and then I stem it out. I'm gonna chop and drop. I'm gonna add some parsley to the mix. I might add some salt. Yeah, probably will, let's add some salt, why not? salt goes in I don't put a whole lot of salt in mine and if you have any aversion to salt they have salt substitutes that you can use and I would highly recommend using a salt substitute so we're gonna thin. what's gonna happen is this is gonna cook for a while so we're not there yet where we're gonna put it in the oven I want to soften up the peppers more I want to get a lot of this tomatoes cooked down and that happens over time the longer you cook this, the darker the sauce gets. My mom, what she would do is, she would stir this, she would cover it, and by the time she was done, she would cook this for hours and hours. It's like amazing. It was so delicious, and the color was so like very dark red by the time she was done. And it just makes it just so interesting because everything marries together and blends so well. It's amazing. You can put basil in here too. If you have fresh basil, I used to grow it in my garden in the summer and that would be really beautiful, the, the fragrance. Dried herbs are less potent than fresh, so keep that in mind. But basil is so amazing. So that would be really refreshing in this as well. But let me cook this down and then we're gonna assemble it to go into our American chop suey. Stay tuned. All right, we're back. And look at the sauce. Look at how rich and bubbly and fabulous it is. And I did add some dried basil, dried parsley. I changed my mind about the basil. I did it. And look how rich that is. It's gorgeous. And it's done, son. Off 350, I preheated my oven. Here is the pasta. Sprayed the pan. Yada, 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 yada. Make sure it's not too hot. And I'm going to pour it all in. I'm telling you, this is going to be so fabulous. Pour it all in. And be careful. You don't want to spill it and you don't want to burn yourself. So always try to pour it away from you. Yikes. That is amazing. And what's going to happen with it is it's going to absorb all of the pasta that's par cooked look at that you can hear it sizzling in the pan yes delicious this look at it it's bubbling in the pan come over here and see this it's literally you can hear it bubbling in the pan because the pasta is like absorbing all of that liquid it's thirsty for it it's like yum yum i want it look at that mm -mm -mm. and then we're gonna put some cheese and you can even add a layer of cheese if you wanted to. Not that I'm going to. I'm just going to add this shake cheese, as I call it. Shake, shake, shake. Then I'm going to add some shake cheese. Maybe a little bit more pepper. Oh my God, it's so good. It looks so delicious. I can't even stand it. Yes, I'm going to use my new handy dandy. Hang on here. I'm going to use my handy dandy OXO grater so good that's just the most super cool thing i've ever seen in my life and i've seen some cool things man i'll tell you what but this is cool okay now what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to put a sheet pan underneath it because i do not want any accidente 350 degrees you know the usual times i usually say an hour but i'm going to say a half hour to 45 minutes half hour covered parchment aluminum foil if you don't have parchment what do we do pray that parchment gets delivered by amazon no cry because we don't have parchment no we use aluminum foil that's the answer ding 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 somebody said it all right we use aluminum foil we don't worry about what we don't have we use what we have that's it 
except if it's something like maybe wax paper, don't use wax paper. But if you have aluminum foil, use it. The problem with aluminum foil, I find, and that's the reason I use parchment conversationally, is not because I want to be fancy and say, look what I got that nobody else has. No. Parchment doesn't get eaten like aluminum foil does with acid. There's a lot of acid in the tomatoes. And I find what happens is, and if you notice it too, if you think about it, what will happen is it's very, tomatoes are very acidic, right? So what will happen to this is it'll eat to aluminum foil. It's happened to me many times. You see these little holes and you're wondering why? Anything acidic like Italian dressing, tomatoes, you put aluminum foil and it's just like all of a sudden you got poke holes everywhere. And who wants that? So that's why I use parchment paper just to not have that. So I'm going to put it under a sheet pan. If there's any extra spillage, then it will go on top of the sheet pan versus in my oven. And half hour, uncover it, 350 for a half hour. Uncover it, and then for the next 15 minutes, just let it uncover. So join me on the other side to reveal American Chop Suey in all of its glory. Not everything's wise. Stick with me, kids. All right, the finale. Let's see what we got. What happened is a half hour is all you need. So 15 minutes, uh, 350, uncover it. I put a little bit of cheese on top. I know that's probably not traditional. But I don't care, dude. It's going to be good. All right, so here we go. Now, get that out of the way. Look at this beautiness. And then the other 15, I'm just setting it because you really want it to be set. It can be too liquidy and goopy, but look at that deliciousness. Yeah, it is gorgeous. So let's get a piece for you. You know it, you know it. And when you let it sit, it actually redistributes all the liquid so it can be scoopable. Oh my gravy. A little more? Why not? Why not, baby? And then I'm going to put a little bit shake cheese on top for you because that's how we serve it up in here this is your portion and if you enjoyed this episode as much as i enjoyed making it for you please like subscribe and join me next time for everything spice i hope you have a wonderful saturday wherever you may be be safe